it's Brian here from Tracks in the Box. Today I want to take a look at a really cool, unique plugin from Akon Digital. It's called Defilter, and Akon describes it as a tool to even out tonal imbalances in a mix or reduce resonant peaks or dips in the frequency spectrum. Basically, you can remove resonances or match the spectrum of a track to one of the included curves or to any other audio. Defilter is very easy to use. You just click the Learn button and let the plugin analyze your audio for a few seconds. Then you choose one of the predefined target EQ profiles or load a custom profile that you've previously saved, and Defilter takes care of the rest. We'll get to how to save your own profiles in just a minute. There are only two controls, and only one you really have to worry about. Signal level threshold is only necessary if you have a lot of background noise, which can confuse Defilter. The default setting is usually fine, but if you do have a lot of noise, just set the threshold above it. Filter length is the important one, but it's very simple. Defilter analyzes the audio and looks for frequencies that remain static over time and creates a curve to neutralize them. This control is calibrated in milliseconds, and the higher the setting, the more detailed the resulting curve. Here's an example of the same material processed at 20 milliseconds in red and 2.5 milliseconds in green. So you can see that the lower settings give you more of a broad stroke curve than the higher settings which fill in all the little details in the sound that you may or may not want depending on the application. This is all a lot easier to understand if you see it in action, so let's take a look. For this example I've got an upright bass track with some really weird resonances. Let's listen to that for a second. mid-range thing there that's just no good. Now, there's a couple of ways I could deal with this. I could load a parametric EQ and I could mess around with the frequencies and the Q and figure out how many dB to cut exactly. Or, I can let D-Filter do all that for me. A D-Filter has presets for several common uses, but once you've worked with it a couple of times, you really get a handle on it, you don't even need to use them. For this example, we'll look at one called Remove Resonance. Now as you can see, the filter length is set to a medium setting of 10 milliseconds. This is so you find major resonances without getting into all the narrow frequencies that you'd find at higher settings of this tool. So the Learn button is already enabled, and we'll let it listen to our audio and figure out what's wrong with it. see this, this graph starts moving, this yellow line. That's D-Filter figuring out where the resonances are. Once it stops moving, that means it's got it figured out and you can turn off the learn button. Looks like it's got it pretty well figured out now. And remember, this is what we started with. So it's already a lot better. This is obviously those ugly frequencies. This, I don't know why it thinks it wants to add this in. It, it's trying to flatten out the frequency response, basically. And this right here that it's cutting out is more than likely the natural resonance of the upright bass. It's an acoustic instrument. It's got that big chamber that resonates, and it's going to be down in this area. So we really don't want these two things in here. That's where the Enable Emphasis Curve comes in handy. You turn that on, you get this curve, you can double click to add or subtract lines for, or uh, control points from it. And what this does is, if the line is at the top here, it's processing 100%. Defilter is doing its thing at 100%. If it's down here, it's not processing at all, and anything in between is between 0 and 100%. So we want to just focus on this area. Move this over here, this over here, now let's listen to that. Again, unprocessed. matching ability of D-Filter is really powerful. 
We just saw how to analyze a piece of audio that has a problem, but you can also capture the spectrum of a sound that you're trying to mimic and apply that to any other sound, like for instance your guitar tone. Now some guitar amp modelers have a feature like this built in, but most of them are much more expensive than D-Filter, and D-Filter works with any modeler or any pre-recorded guitar track. So I've got a piece of audio here. I went through my music library and I found a guitar tone that I liked where the guitar was soloed, isolated. And I clipped that out. Now I've got this set to the highest filter length because I want to get every detail of it and I'll decide when I apply it how much of that detail to use. I've got the learn button on and now I've got this muted for copyright purposes. I'm going to let D-Filter do its thing. That's probably good enough. Then all you do is click save here. I've got a little folder set up. You give it a name. And you save it. Okay, I've got this tune here. It's guitar, bass, and drums. The bass and the drums sound just fine. The guitar is lacking a little bit. Let's take a listen to that real quick. Of, uh, dull and indistinct. So let's see what D filter can do with this. As usual, we're going to let it examine the audio, but first I'm going to take this down to about three milliseconds because I don't want it to do every little detail of the tone I grabbed before. I want it to just do a, a broad stroke application of that tone. Right now it's not applying the uh, other sound that I had, it's just figuring out what the uh, spectrum of this sound is. So it sounds a little weird. That looks good. Now I'm going to go in here and load up the one I saved before. And that's what that sound looks like. Let's see what we get. thing about this is you can go through and make a library of these settings and just flip through them. Let me turn this off. Let's try a different one. Some of these work better than others. I actually like that one. Without. So that's EQ matching in D-Filter. Now we can actually take that same technique we just applied to the guitar track and apply that to an entire mix. So I've got this song on here, it's a little retro kind of a 60s sounding instrumental thing. And uh, it's not too bad on its own, but let's just see what we can do with it with D-Filter. I've got D-Filter on the preset, auto equalize music, and for now I've got the emphasis curve turned off. Let's listen to it real quick without D-Filter. It's not bad, 
It's a little harsh and maybe a little thin, but let's see what we can do. So this was before. This is after. To me, that's not necessarily a big improvement. Now, what this is using is the built-in target pro profile, which is just a generic music profile. Um, let's see what we can do with some other mixes that I've saved. Now what you can do at this point is either leave defilter on your 2 bus as your final EQ or you can use the resulting curve as a guide to fix the mix yourself. If you hover over the analyzer while holding the alt key, defilter displays the exact frequency and gain under your cursor and you can use that information to either approximate the curve in an EQ plugin or pinpoint possible issues with individual instrument tracks like too much low end in your bass track or kick drum etc. So that's Defilter from Akon Digital. It's basically a Swiss Army knife for bad sounding audio that helps you fix major problems or gently shape a track into something better. It couldn't be easier to use, and at under $100 US, there's no reason not to add it to your virtual toolbox. Thanks for watching.